Today, I will show you how to bring in 3D assets like the stereoscopic background we just created with Cinema 4D in episode 1 right here into Adobe After Effects and composited it with a live action green screen VR 180 footage I shot with a 3D 180 camera and color grading techniques you can use to match them together as a seamless futuristic design like what you saw at the AMD and Metal Moon Base Invasion music video. This video will be a great workflow tutorial if you never work with the immersive VR tool set inside Adobe After Effects. <laughs> Right in the tutorial, I want to thank Beer.tv to help on localization of this tutorial series. This series will be available inside China with Chinese subtitles and many other languages as well. If you want to see the finished video, go check out Jonathan Winbush Beer channel, where you will see the AMD Moonbase Invasion and many other amazing creation with your VR headset. We are working in stereoscopic 360, so VR headset is the best way to preview your work. Okay, here is Jonathan Winbush. I'm gonna jump here in the After Effects. So if I right click, you'll come up with this menu. I'm gonna import that stuff that I just rendered. I actually rendered it overnight last night just to save time. But what I did was I rendered a PNG sequence and I rendered that at 60 FPS. So if you're rendering any type of sequence, this icon box will pop up. It will say sequence. You want to make sure that's checked mm -hmm. so that it brings in your full sequence here. Okay, interpret footage main. And I'm going to change my frames per second. When I import it, sometimes it will come in at different frame rates. But I know I rendered it at 60, so I'm going to click 60 mm -hmm. and then just hit OK. And now we have our, our five second loop here. Yeah, so Hugh gave me some footage that he shot in 180 mm -hmm. stereo. We're going to bring that in now. It's just of a guy doing a little bit of dancing. And they actually, this is at 6K, but since, you know, we rendered at 3K, what we could do is just shrink it down by 50%. Mm -hmm. So... To be able to get the exact measurements of my pre-render here, I'm just going to left click and drag this down to this composition window. Mm -hmm. And that's going to make a new composition and put my footage in there automatically. Mm -hmm. And so here's our new composition window. And it's going to be five seconds. That's all we need for the, the demo here. Mm -hmm. But this is over under. And what I'm going to do, well here, I like to organize my files. So I'm going to make a pre-render folder. Then I'm going to put my space hole in there. And then I'm going to make a, a folder for my comps, which will be a working comp. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to make a folder for footage. And this is just something I'd like to work clean so that I can work fast. So this is just something that I do ahead of time so I don't get stuck later once I start importing a lot of different files. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to drag his... If you're familiar with working in After Effects or Premiere, you know, it's all timeline based on here. So I'm going to drag his footage down here. Like I said, it was 6K. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the screen, everything is off. And that's because it's double the resolution right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to hit S for scale. And I'm going to make it 50% and this should line up automatically. Nice. Yep, so everything is as it should be. And we don't want him just floating in space. Later on, I'll show you how to make a stage instead of Cinema 4D that we could put him on. But for this part right here, we're going to um, maybe we just put him on like a black platform yeah. or something. So he's a floating not, platform. Something. Yeah. So that's pretty easy. What I could do is I'll make a new composition here. Mm -hmm. So go down where it says create new composition, left click. And let's say let's name this platform so we know what it is. 
I'll name it pre underscore platform because this is going to be a, a pre comp. So I always like to put pre in front of stuff that's going to be a pre comp. And yeah, 1920 by 1080 will work because basically I'm just going to use this to put a platform underneath him. So let me put this in my. Oh, let me make another folder for pre comp. I'll put this in my pre comp folder. And this basically gives us a new canvas. It's a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. And all I'm going to do is put a black composition in there. So if I right click down here in my timeline, go to new, go to solid, solid. And just put a black solid in there. And then here, let me show you this first. So I have my black solid here. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do is I want to have that black solid underneath them. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring my pre platform underneath him in the timeline and you see we just get a black box here mm -hmm. and the black box isn't stereo at all you know if i move it around it's not going to look right inside the headset you know you're going to see it in one eye and not the other and it's just going to make you dizzy mm -hmm. so the way to compensate for that like i was saying the skybox tools are now built into after effects and it's under here immersive video mm -hmm. so you'll click on immersive video and there's a plugin here called VR Plane of Sphere. Mm -hmm. Now, what this will do, it will make our whatever stills we put in here, mm -hmm. it will translate it into the VR workspace. And then from there, we can make it, you know, over, under, side by side, mm -hmm. etc. Or you could just keep it mono. And so, looking at our palette here, when I did that, you automatically seen that it made it into mono VR. Mm -hmm. But if I go to frame layout, and I click stereoscopic over under, now it adds it to the top and bottom mm -hmm. and it automatically compensates for the eye. Like you can, you can mess with the eyes if you want, but I would suggest just leaving it at default because it's pretty good at pro, um, projecting what needs to be there. And so basically if I put on my VR headset, you would see a black sphere behind the dancer there. Mm -hmm. But I want to move it so that it's actually underneath his feet here. So let me just pull up one window and you go under your rotate projection, it's the X. Yeah, so if I go to projection till X mm -hmm. and start messing with the attributes, you can actually align it underneath them. And then, you know, you just eyeball it and kind of place it where you want it. Mm -hmm. And as you're doing it for one screen, it automatically compensates for the other eye. So it's doing it both at the same time. So if I zero this out and show you again, as I bring it down, it's bringing it down to both eyes. Nice. And then, you know, that looks kind of weird. We don't just want like a, a square yeah. underneath them. So Put some feather around it. Yeah. I say, that's why we use the pre-comp. Like I could have used the solid, but when you're working in um, VR, sometimes if you put a mask around it, so you feather it out, it doesn't interpolate it that well. And it kind of makes it look kind of funky. Uh -huh. So I like working in pre-comps because in my pre-comp, I could open up my, my black solid. I could right click, make a new mask. And then if I click M when I have my mask, uh -huh. you can come up and change the shape. Mm -hmm. So I do it this way because it makes a perfect oval. So if I go to shape, ellipse, hit okay. Now it makes a perfect oval right mm -hmm. there. And you can just feather that out under your mask feather. You just start to feather it. And you just work with it till you get it the way you want. And then if I go back to my main comp, you can see that it's starting to feather out, but it start you're starting to see the edges just, a little yeah. bit. So yeah, the way to compensate for that is your mass expansion. Uh -huh. You could just start to make it smaller. And then, you know, you just kind of eyeball it going back and forth. It doesn't look like that did much. Here, let me I could physically make the mask smaller. Yeah. Yeah, see, now we have this little black platform that's furthered out underneath them. And it's all about your preference. You know, you just go in and move it to as you see fit. Yeah. I think it's also really important to have that there because we don't have a real shadow right here. So we go with green screen other shadow as well. Yeah, so that exactly. Actually hide the shadow. Yeah. So whenever, like whenever I was working on a stage, this is the way I put the shadow underneath them. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about 
the mantra, the metal mantra, it comes with this extension called the metal globe preview. Yeah. yeah, so if you don't have your VR, I'll show you two ways. So if you don't have a VR headset hooked up to your computer, mm -hmm. you can still work in 360 here. Yeah. So if you look down in here, mm -hmm. there's an actual VR HMD icon. Mm -hmm. And if you hover over, it's called Adobe Immersive Environment. Mm -hmm. So you click on that and you'll see we'll have a whole skew of um, options. So you could, if you're working a mono, you know, you click mono. If you're working an over under, you mm -hmm. click top bottom. Or if you're working side by side, you have that option as well. Nice. But to be able to activate it, you have to first go to video preview preference. Ah. You click that and then this window will pop up and you have to make sure that Adobe Immersive Environment is checked or else nothing will show up in your headset. Nice. It's, so, um, yeah, same thing with the Metal Globe or if you're using a GoPro player, same thing. You have to make sure that it's checked in here. Do we still need the Steam server to, to connect the, the headset? Or in the new version, it doesn't need the Steam server anymore? It depends. Um, I haven't tried it with the Oculus. So I'm not sure what Oculus, but for the Vive that I have here, the Windows Mixed Reality, the Steam server does. Open okay. up, so Same yeah, Oculus. yeah, Oculus. okay. And so, once you do that, and then I'll click top and bottom. It doesn't show up on here, but you know, if you look at it inside the, the headset here, uh -huh. you can actually see what you're working on. Nice. Now, the ramp, if you try to ramp preview it, it's gonna look the it's gonna go like choppy frames in here because it's a ramp preview, yeah. But if you just want to kind of see what you're working on and seeing how it looks in VR headspace, uh -huh. it's a perfect way to kind of check up on your work. Nice. So if you drop down the resolution of like proxy instead of full, you drop down to quarter, is that in the resolution in the headset we drop down as well? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So yeah, everything that you see here, you'll see in there, but you're not going to see over under, of course, you'll see it at actual 3D depth. But yeah, that's how we, we get that there. And let me see if I could get a RAM preview. Yeah, the RAM preview is going to run a little bit slow, but mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, essentially, that's how you could get your, your guy compositioned into your, your CG environment. And if you want to do something like, you know, he's not really blended into this environment because yeah. he was lit differently. And I mean, you could try to light your scene in cinema, but I found the easiest way is to add magic bullet looks. If you have access to that or if, even if you do like curves or levels, I mean, anything will work, but... You want to make sure that you make a new adjustment layer. Bring that over top of everything. And then I'll start by showing looks. And I just use like a looks preset usually. Mm -hmm. And it looks pretty good. So, you know, we could do a cool effect. You can already see it's starting to blend together. Depending on the type of atmosphere you're going for. You know, you can do the warm, the vibrant. It's just a whole bunch of presets in here. Cinematic. And it let's just click on action and you know automatically pops up and you can see he looks a little bit more in tune with his environment here nice. and then it might be a little bit too much you know so what i'll do is on my adjustment layer the reason i use adjustment layers is because then i can bring the opacity down a little bit so let's say knock it down to 75 bring some of the original color back in and this is just all on your preference, you know. This is basically color correction. So, you know, just a lot of back and forth there. And then, too, I'm noticing this stuff came with alpha pre-built into it. Mm -hmm. And so we're starting to see a little bit of chaffing on the edges there. Mm -hmm. So a way that we could compensate for that is we'll go to our key footage. And you'll just type in choke. That automatically comes in After Effects Suite. And what I like to use first is just simple choke. And then, you know, knock it up one. You see what it looks like. And you see it's starting to squeeze in the edges there. Mm -hmm. So let's see what it looks like at three. Yeah, oh, so wow, we're nice. essentially knocking the, the, you know, if you have like a bad key or the green screen isn't lit correctly, you just use the choke. And it's going to take away the pixels along the outside. Nice. Now, there's a little give and take, you know, depending on what you're shooting. Like if someone has long hair, it's going to cut away the hair. And so, you know, you just have to eyeball it and play it by eye. Yeah. In post guy, I've actually also show you how to actually use the new environment to relit the whole scene uh, with like the forest effect, uh, kind, of, kind of sweet. But we actually need the background for us to relight the scene. So. <laughs> right, right. In part three, 
we will show you how you can obtain free 3D assets on the internet instead of making your own in Cinema 4D. Some rendering techniques without using Redshift. We will show you how to create an interesting 3D background with the brand new Metal Flux and how to put everything together with the live action green screen, VR 180 footage and 3D elements all within After Effects. A good VR piece cannot be finished without good audio that communicates with the video. So in part 4, we will show you audio techniques beyond just spatial audio. We will use Subpack, a wearable base system, to design graphical elements that react to the music, which we will use the brand new track from Mix Master Mic. We will show you how easy to leverage the powerful audio react engine from Metal Mantra to create some very interesting effects. I will also create a bonus episode to show you how I approach using VR 180 green screen footage within VR 360 and how to key out VR 180 footage with forest effects, continuum and other chroma key solutions. This is a massive series designed to up your game in virtual reality. A bridge between live action VR to motion graphic design and to achieve some of the Hollywood effect you see in recent successful VR pieces. We want to make this series for you, so comment below if you have any questions and requests. Again, we are doing this free and all out of the love of VR. So it will really help us if you can like our videos and share this series with your friends. Now, go take a coffee break and come back next week for part 3.